Yeah, assalamu alaikum and good evening to everyone. Um, I don't speak very often and I don't know whether to be proud or scared of featuring against such an esteemed panel. Um, but I'm going to speak about um, an aspect of counterterrorism legislation which isn't as exciting as rendition or torture. Um, but I will say it's probably more relevant to a lot of people that are sitting here today and uh, probably your friends and family, etc. Um, there is, there is um, an aspect of counterterror legislation amongst um, that is being practiced today where there is no need for reasonable suspicion that you can be held nine hours without access to legal um, help where you have no right to remain silent um, all without being arrested. Um, in the last year, I've been stopped every time that I've travelled. Incidentally, one, one of the times when I was coming back from Sarajevo. Um, I have a friend who travelled recently. He, he, um, he went out to, to Asia for a holiday with his friends. He came back and then he decided to go with his family to the same location. Um, he got to the airport. He was in the queue. He bought his visa. When he got to immigration, um, they said that they want you back. The Home Office wants you back, you and your family. And when he came back, he was held for hours, including his wife and his children. Um, I have a close friend who, when he was stopped at the airport, when he asked the officer, the, 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 the officer that was questioning him, what will happen to me if I don't answer your questions? I quote, um, if you don't answer, I'm going to pick up the phone and I'm going to get my team to raid your house in front of your wife and your kids and they won't be very nice about it. Um, I have another friend who, when he was being questioned, um, he was asked about his, for his email address. And um, he's a young guy, so he's got the numbers 911 in his email because he likes Porsche 911s, right? But this officer was adamant that he was glorifying September 11th, you know? Um, so I'm talking about Schedule 7 of the Terrorism Act, ladies and gentlemen. Cage Prisoners' next project is to, um, which we will be launching in June, is um, a website. It's called Schedule 7 Stories. Um, if you've got internet on your phone right now, you can log on to www.schedule7stories.com. You know, um, there is quite, quite a bit that's done already and it is mobile friendly, just in case people are in the queue at, you know, um, for immigration and they want to quickly Google their rights. <laughs> um, now, the reason for this project is, number one, to raise awareness, um, to draw attention to this issue, um, to consolidate data and people's experiences, to have one point, you know, focused. And also, it's to give confidence to people to speak out and complain about this. Um, in my experience, I've come across three categories. Number one of them, and this is including my own brother, they don't know that it's happening. He's been stopped, but he just calls it, oh, it was a random, you know, random check. And he's been stopped quite a few times as well. Um, there's, there's, there's a subset that think that, um, and that's within the Muslim community, that think that it, it's okay to do it. Because I quote a Muslim man, unfortunately, Muslims are terrorists. Um, and then there's, there's another subset of people who want to do something about it. They're angry, they want to complain, but they don't know how. They don't know where to turn to. Or maybe they're nervous, they don't know what to do, they don't have the confidence. So this, this resource, if you want to call it, will be a, a kind of focal point where they will be able to um, find out what their rights are, where they will be able to get in touch with caseworkers who will guide them through the process, where they will be, who they will be able to tell their story, and it will be amongst a collection of stories. And I hope that, the, you know, we were talking about being innovative and creative, and I hope that the panel, you know, um, can see this as, as one way of putting pressure on the government on this particular um, legislation. Um, you know, at this point, to prove what I'm talking about, um, people probably use statistics, right? But I'm not going to do that. Last week I was reading The Guardian and I came across the article about um, an ex-SO15 officer. His name is Kevin Maxwell. He, he's a whistleblower. And he basically, the, the Met have just lost an appeal on an employment tribunal. And one of his complaints was that he was asked to racially profile, yeah, profile people that were being stopped at the, at, the, at the airport. He worked at Heathrow Airport. And he said that he was asked to act as a racial buffer because the brown person won't mind when a brown person stops them, 
right? So, you know, we've got proof that these things do happen. And if we don't stop it now, it will happen to us. It will happen to, to you, to your friends, to your family. You know, it will happen when you want to go to Hajj, or it will happen when you're going to meet your family abroad. Now, I'm not against keeping our shores secure, but in reality, this legislation is being counterproductive because what it's doing is taking a subset of society, a huge subset of society, and it's, it's making them angry. And what it is doing is, is it's um, kind of planting the seed of distrust towards authority. Um, so I invite all of you to attend our launch event on June the 5th at a location in central London. Please bring yourselves, your families, um, your colleagues and everyone that you know. Um, it will be in central London. Please keep an eye on the Facebook page and the website for Cage Prisoners where you'll find out more about the event. Thank you. It just leaves me to say thank you very much to our panel. You know, please recognise their contribution today and also to you all as well for attending. Thank you very much again.